All right, guys, we're going to talk about the motor some more. I've started this uh, about 85 or 90, about 90 hours ago uh, when we changed motors, but I never have really got around to finishing the, the swap between the 915 and the 960. On top of that, we got a new propeller to talk about, so don't die out on me. Don't fall asleep on the 916 information. Be sure and catch the propeller information. It is really good. All right, so you know, back in the March, I swapped, well, my first flight was March 1st with the 916. I swapped from the 915 to 916. Uh, was it worth it? And that's what we're here to talk about. The 916, I've got 90 hours on it, no problems. It's a good Rotac engine. Rotac makes good engines. The 915 I had was an ex excellent engine. No problems with it at all. Is it worth the money to swap? It's really a personal preference. Performance-wise, no. Uh, it has 20 more horsepower on the top end at 5,800 RPM, but your constant speed of 5,500 RPM and below is exactly the same horsepower. I can tell no difference. Uh, fuel burn is supposed to be better on fuel. Not at all. 5.5 with the old prop on here when I did all my fuel testing and I've done a lot of it. 5.5 gets you 100 mile an hour. True air speed at 3,000 feet, day in and day out. Both motors were identical on that part. They advertised the 916 being more fuel efficient. Uh, I have not found it anywhere to be more fuel efficient. Seems to be exactly the same. Does it have more horsepower? Absolutely, when you give it the gas. Uh, most of our flying has been in hot weather. It has really been hot this summer. And this motor, the extra 20 horsepower creates a lot of heat. I get about a 2,000 foot climb and then I have to level out and let it cool. Uh, running wide open for your good climb. Climbs, climbs good but uh, definitely makes a lot of heat. I have not done anything to change, but we've been down in the s about 80 the last few weeks. Works fine. Uh, climb out temperatures run about 230 uh, at this temperature. When it was hot, I was getting up to close to 240, and I would level out 240 and let it cool, cool back down. Cruise speeds, no problem. Temperatures all run pretty much where they were with the 915, but the climb out, Temperatures are really, really hot. So, would I change again? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, 2,000 hour motor versus a 1,200 hour motor, what the 915 was, that makes no difference to experimental aircraft. We can fly as long as we pass the compression test. If this motor is going to make it to 2,000 hours, I guarantee your 915 is going to make it to 2,000 hours. Uh, if you're certified, you're in a whole different world. I mean, you have to overhaul it at a certain time if you're out for hire. But, but experimental world, uh, you pay for that extended warranty, basically, uh, the price difference. So I don't know. I'm glad I have a 916 now. I don't have anything, no regrets. But many people have asked me, is it worth the swap? And there again, what do you call worth? I mean, uh, I can tell a little difference when there's two of us in soft sand taken off on the, on the uh, sandbars. You got just a little bit more there, and, and that's good. But as far as flying, normal flying, airport to airport, I don't think you'll be able to tell the difference between a 915 and a 916. So it's really, it's your choice what to buy. If you don't have an engine, you just have to weigh out the, I think it's an $8,000 $8, difference between the two engines. So you will have to weigh that out. Is it worth it to you or not? Uh, if some, you know, if it's for tax purposes, some, some that helps in some ways. So that's, that's really up to you. I'm not overly, impressed with the impossible engine we'll, we'll say uh, it's a good engine I, i'm not saying it's a bad engine i'm just saying it's really not this 
step up uh, much better. I, I was promised a cooler running engine. I was promised more fuel economy. Neither of those did I get. So uh, it's a Rotec. I'm happy with the motor. It runs fine. I'm not saying that it's a bad motor. I'm just saying I don't know where it's worth any more than the 915 in reality. And that's really, I mean, that's about all I can tell you about the motors. Uh, now we get to the props. Uh, when, I, when I bought the motor, I had a 72 inch Airmaster prop, which has been a perfect prop on the 915. I had no regrets at all having it, but then it wasn't rated for the horsepower. It had five 16 mounting boats. They want a 3 8 mounting boat for the 916. Uh, the Airmaster representative told me the old prop was fine at Oshkosh, but then later when I called Airmaster, they said, no, we prefer, and that's why he, when he told me the difference. So I was able to swap out props, very reasonable, and uh, that's where the real change came. Uh, we tied the prop, we tied the plane before we took the old prop off we tied and did a static pull test with it. I bought a little cheap uh, Chinese finest scale and uh, <laughs> I didn't get the one that registers the high number so you'll notice in this video my son is back there taking a beating from the prop blast to get these shots for you so give Justin a hand you know he, he did good work there. The old prop, 5800 RPM on this motor, pulled 614 pounds, okay? The new prop, which is an 80 inch stole prop, I don't know how, as far as I know, it's a new, new to them prop. It's a Sensenix blades. So the new blades are Sensenix blades. They're 80 inch, you get 80 or 82. They said they were the same blades, just tips cut off two inches. I went with the 80 for ground clearance. I wouldn't want to get any, I wouldn't want to lose much more ground clearance. So I went with the 80 inch. The static test with the new propeller was 773 pounds. That was a 25% increase in pull, dead pull. Uh, that became noticeable. You talk about change, that was far more of a change than swapping motors was. Uh, I've got 55 hours on the new prop now. I've done all sorts of testing with it. It is just a, well, it's a 20, according to my numbers, it's a 23% larger uh, square inches, 4,000 square inch, 4,069 square inches with a 72 inch prop, uh, 5,024 inches with an 80 inch prop. And that's, that's how many square inches are inside this circle. And one benefit that I was not expecting at all is the cruise speed. I gained eight miles an hour cruise speed at 5.5 gallon per hour. I went from, like I said a while ago, I've always cruised at 100 mile an hour on 5.5. When I put this prop on here, 5.5, I'm running 108. Didn't do anything different. And I ran that for several days because I really didn't believe it. I mean, it's a stole prop. The other prop was actually, they told me it was more of a speed prop. If you want to go 200 mile an hour, the 72 inch prop was where it's at. 100 mile an hour, where we, the world we live in, uh, this is a prop you want because you have the low end. But I was not expecting to gain any cruise, but I definitely gained the cruise day after day. So I'm gonna go give you some numbers there on the cruise. Five gallons is getting me 102. And that's 20.4 miles a gallon. 5.5 is getting me 108. And that's 19.6 miles a gallon. A six gallon burn is getting me 111 at 18.5 miles per gallon. 16.5 is getting me 114 at 17.5 miles per gallon.
1.5 mile per gallon. Takeoff, I went from, I took 10 takeoffs the best I could, and I averaged out right at 150 foot. This is dead air, calm, no wind. I did it both directions on, a, on dead air days. Uh, I averaged 150 foot was my best average with the older prop and the new engine. With the new prop, it dropped 135 feet. And all this was done on 70 degree, 70 degree mornings. So that's a 10% decrease in takeoff. So I gained that, and that's all, that's all from the prop. My climb out is, is 70 mile an hour. That's what I climb out at. With the other prop, it's 1,500 foot a minute, plus or minus a little. With this prop, it's 1,750 plus or minus 20 or 30 feet. Uh, so I gained 16% increase in climb just from the prop. So with all that information, I'm very happy with the propeller. That is, that is the biggest change I made. And uh, like I say, I don't know if the 82 inch would be better. I just, I just don't know uh, about that part, but I'm very, very happy with the propeller. Uh, so that's my non-scientific review of the 916 and 915 swap and the new Airmaster prop compared to the old Airmaster prop. So that's a lot of numbers and stuff that I don't know will be of any value to you or not at all, but that's what I've did since March the 1st. I've tried to gather all the information I can about this setup. It's a really good setup now. I really like it, I like the pair. Uh, I'm really liking the, the fuel savings is coming from the propeller. I'm really liking that also. So. All right, quick review. See if you thought, see if you can pass the test. <laughs> uh, with 25% increase in pool, uh, we've got 23% larger circle, and I 16% increase in climb, and 10% decrease in takeoff distance. And as Paul Harvey says, now you know the rest of the story. So <laughs> hope it does you some good in your decisions you got to make when you're buying for your plane. But I would definitely check out this prop, no matter which engine you're putting it on. So catch you next time. Hope you have a good week of flying. So as Paul Harvey said, <laughs> Paul Harvey, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Oh, poor heart. <laughs> <laughs> don't, leave, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Paul Harvey. So as Paul Harvey says, now you know the rest of the story. Okay, Susan, cut it. <laughs>